Today, we are creating the app bundle that we will publish in the Google Play so that the users can download and install our game or app. So we're going to see how to do this in Unity, following a few steps and hope this video is really useful for you. So let's start and the first thing we will do is once we have our game or application finished, so we will create this executable file that we will upload to the Google Play. How to do it? So first thing we will do is go to File, Build Settings, okay? In here, we will make sure that we are targeting the correct platform. In my case, I want to create an Android application that I will publish to the Google Play. So this is fine. And very important, you need to enable this option if it's not enabled yet. So we need to build an app bundle for publishing in Google Play. It's important to enable this one because since long time ago, Google doesn't allow the APK file format, only AAV, a bundle, files are approved and allowed by, by Google. So very important to click this one in case it's not already done in your case. Once we ensure that we are targeting the correct platform and we are going to create the correct format file, we can go at the bottom left to player settings and more settings will appear that we can configure for our game. So the first thing will be the company name. In here, usually what the people put is the developer name. Okay, so developer name, whatever is your developer game. Then the product name, so the name of this game or application. It's very important to understand that this name you're putting in here doesn't need to be the same than in Google Play. So in here, you need to put the, the name of the game that the user will see when they install it in their device. So in your device, you know that you don't have as much margin for putting a long text. So if the text you put in here is too long, it will be truncated. So here, I recommend you to put a short name that is also relevant for your game or application in this case. Okay, so I will put game name for example. And then next thing you can configure in here is the icon, the logo of your game, the logo that the user will see and then click on it to open your application or game. So we can select a file inside our project so that is used as the logo, for example in this case this. So what the user will see in their device once they install my game will be this icon and game name below of it. So they can click it and play. So once we configure these, uh, these details, we can go to the next option that will be resolution and presentation. In here, we are going to choose how our game can be presented to the final user. The most important thing, I will not review all the details because there are a lot of settings. If you need any of them specifically, just check it out and try to solve it. But uh, I will show you the most important and relevant settings we need to, to configure. So one of the most important in this part of resolution and presentation is the orientation. So by default, it's going to allow the user to rotate the device and the screen will adapt, okay? So you can also block some of these orientations because maybe you have developed your game to be shown only in landscape, horizontal mode, or only in portrait, only vertical mode. So if this is the case, you need to uncheck the ones that you have not planned to be used in your game. For example, in our case, we see that the game, it's a 16.9 resolution aspect, so it's horizontal. So we are going to keep only the landscape options and we will remove the portrait ones. So that's why I unclicked and disabled the portrait ones. So I'm going to allow the user to rotate the screen and we will see it, but only in landscape mode, okay? So once this is set up, we can go to the next tab, important that will be other settings. In other settings, we are going to configure quite a lot of things. So let's scroll and see what we need. 
So first thing we will need is to provide a package name to our game. What is the package name? So basically when you upload a game or an application to Google, each of them has a unique package name or ID. Let's open, for example, in the Play Store, let's open Instagram. So as you can see, this app has a unique identifier and package name. So all of them usually follow the same convention that is com dot developer name, in this case, Instagram, you can see dot and then the name of the application or game. They are using Android. It's curious. But uh, in your case, for example, what you can define is com dot developer name dot and then the name of your game. So I'm going to put game name is the same I put above in here. Okay. So you can define in here the corresponding package that will be unique for you. As is the first time we're publishing, the version will be 1.0 and the bundle version is the one. Once you keep updating your application, this needs to increase all the time. So next time it will be 1.1 and here a 2. Next one maybe is 2.0 and here a 3. Okay, but well, as this is the first time, we will put 1.0 and 1. Next thing are the configurations on the devices that we are targeting. So you can see minimum API level and target API level. It's important to be up to date with the Google News because the target API level is changing every year. Right now, I am recording this video beginning of 2024, but right now you need to target at least API level 33, else your app will be rejected. So I'm going to target the API level 33, and then I will allow users from the API level 22 and forward to be able to download and use my application or game. Once we finish with this first identification part, we can go to the configuration. Very important, scripting backend needs to be IL2 CPP. It's mandatory because else you cannot create RMIAV 64 uh, games. So we will change this from mono to IL, IL2 CPP. We will keep this as the network standard. We can choose master as the compiler configuration because we are going to production. And finally, we need to target two different architectures so that our game is approved. We need to target ARM v7 and also ARM 64. So I will click this one. I will create an app bundle that is applicable and it's uh, valid for both cases, compatible with these two target architectures. Once you do this, you don't see anymore this warning. Okay, you can see here at the beginning it was showing a warning because I am not creating this app bundle uh, allowing the ARM64 users to use it. So once I click it, warning disappears, I am creating a, an app bundle that is compatible with both architectures and Google will approve it. Then we see other configurations, but in this case I'm not going to change anything. In case you need any special permissions, you will need to check maybe this part of the of the configuration. But in my case, I am creating a basic uh, game. Doesn't need any extra permissions as reading images or nothing. It's just a simple game. Okay, so we have finished with other settings. We can move to the last step that is publishing settings. In here, we are going to create a key that is the one that will sign our game so to allow Google to know, okay, this specific sign is for this game and this developer. So it's unique, okay? For that, inside the publishing settings tab, we will go to the KStore manager. In here, we can create a new KeyStore. KeyStore, create new, and let's choose a dedicated location to not uh, lose this. I'm going to create it in here. Van Gapes. This will be the game 
key. Okay, so we need to put the password to it. Confirm the password we just provided. Yeah, let me do it again because I did it wrong. So this is. This is the password, now both match, perfect. So the next part is the key values. So this is the key specific to this game, in this case. So I will put game name key. The password, so a different password or, a, or the same password as you prefer. So at the end, what we did at the beginning is, okay, this is like the key store vault, let's say. And inside that, we can create keys. We are creating the key specific for this game, game name key. With a password, how many years we want this to be valid? I think 1,000 is the maximum. Yeah, 1,000 years. So let's put the maximum, okay, to avoid needing to renew it every few years. So let's put 1,000. <laughs> We will not arrive to 1,000 years, or yes, <laughs> we don't know how the future will be. But yeah, 1,000 should be enough. This key is going to be working for 1,000 years. First name and last name, okay? In case you want to put in here some details about uh, yourself as developer, and uh, they are not mandatory, so we can just go ahead with this one and create the key. If we click Add Key button, once we can configure, we have configured everything, it says, okay, the key we store and also the key, the specific key for this game have been created. So do you want to use them in this project? If we click yes, automatically they will be completed in here and uh, we are ready to create the app bundle. In case our key already exists, instead of creating one, a new one from the key store manager, we can just check in this option, custom key store, and browse and find it. So in our case, we have saved it inside this folder. Here it is, game minus key, key store. So we open it and it will automatically show you the key store. You can unblock the key store. And later you can see all the keys inside, inside this key store. In my case, I only have one, so it's this one. Once we have this, we are ready to create the app bundle. So we can close this project settings. We can keep working now in build settings. And the last step will be, so once everything is okay, we can just save the project and we can click in the build button at the bottom right. We will put a name, so game name, version one in this case. We will choose where to save it. I am saving it inside this folder. Let's click save. And now we just need to wait for the app bundle to be created. This will take one, two, or a bit more minutes. So I will cut the video in here. I don't need to do anything else. This will just keep progressing until it's finished and we can see the file created. Perfect. So the process finished and here we have the app bundle that has been created. Okay, so this is the file basically that we can upload and publish in Google Play so that the users can download our game. So one last recommendation I can do is just check the logs after this process has run. We are just seeing some warnings and info. So there is no error in reading here. So it means that everything went fine. You can review the warnings in case you want to fix something, but these ones that are showing in my case are not relevant at all. So we can forget about them and you, the game will work perfectly. So thank you so much for watching until here until the end. Hope this video was useful and you can start uploading and publishing your games and applications to Google Play. Let me know if you face any problem or any doubt in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe this video you helped me a lot with that. So thanks a lot and see you in the next one.